Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern. And um, before we get stuck into the video, i just got to say I've had a tremendous response from the competition. At the moment I have over 30 people interested in owning one of these signal boxes, which is great. I only wish I made over 30 of them so at least everybody gets one. <laughs> But uh, I think that would have been a bit of a tall order. Anyway, thank you everybody for commenting and showing an interest in this signal box. Very much appreciated. Right. So, where have we left off? Well, here is one of the signal boxes. And where we left off from last week was... The lower half was in a stage ready for painting, but I have painted them and weathered along the base of the card here. And I've just given the window frame a very slight weathering around the top there. And uh, I've also painted the chimney breast, um, capping stones and the chimney pots and weathered them as well, in the usual way. And also, if I flip this signal box over, this is signal box A by the way, you can see I've added some rotting details. When you look through the window you'll see that rotting, hopefully. So let's have a look shall we. Can you see it? Yeah, barely. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I painted the inside wall white and uh, put a black um, rim around the base. So, I've had some interesting comments about this signal box and the one that stands out the most is the one where I suggested I haven't put the handrail around the window frames. Hold on a minute, hold on a minute, I've got one here. Well, it's a bit late now isn't it, you should have had it in the last video. Anyway. <laughs> I have made one. Now I did try to make one uh, in the last video but I had awful trouble trying to get these handrails to stay upright and the car was falling apart. So this video is mainly about how I made this and this will just go onto the corner like that. I got the idea from the 39 steps, so you guess where I'm coming from now. So let's go over to the bench and I'll show you how I made this handrail. So as I said earlier, I had a little brainwave on how to do this. It had something to do with the 39 steps video and um, you probably guessed it. If I flip this over gently, you can see copper wire coming through the base of the landing here. And that's how I did it. So, let's crack on. So, firstly, you cut out your landing. Um, as you probably noticed that this signal box, I've only done it for two sides. But for your signal box, you would obviously have a third side. And it's only 5mm wide, and the card is only 1mm thick. Um, and I've prescribed it to represent some sort of planking as well. So, once you've got that in mind, you make up a profile piece of copper. Now, as you can see, it's folded in such a way that it comes back on itself at least four millimeters here and then you have a down leg now the down leg is about 12 mil on both of them so then what we do then is we pre-drill the card so that once we've pre-drilled the card we can super glue those two legs in place so the size drill I'm using is a 0.8 and I'm just 
popping the hole in the card just roughly about a millimetre from the edge. It does fur up a little bit on the edge, but um, I wouldn't worry about that. Right, so now that you've drilled your holes and you just fit the copper wire in that's already shaped to the profile, and then you preset it to the height you want. Now in this instance, for me, it's roughly 8mm from the centre of the copper wire to the centre of the landing. Which brings a handrail just below the big window, or the lower big window. And then just add a touch of super glue. So, now that you've set both ends, at 8mm centre. Now we've got to do the this one here on the corner which is a little bit more tricky because now we've got to feed the copper wire into this hole and just hold it in place till you get the 8mm because you don't want to super glue it yet you want to solder it to the top rail so you do that first and then you can push that up and down to get the 8mm distance. So now we come to the tricky bit. So if you've noticed I've left the copper strips quite long. The reason being is so I can hold it in situ. Um, especially for the intermediate ones but this one is the tricky one to get right. And you've got to try and get the copper wire underneath the top rail. Now, if you've noticed, I've already had one attempt at this, and uh, this is my second attempt. Just a case of putting the right amount on. Right, so I'll let that cool down for a little bit. Right now let's cool down a little bit. All you have to do now is push that down to set the height that you want, which is the 8mm. Um, and then you just put a bit of super glue underneath. So now that you've got your corner ones all preset at the height you want, all you've got to do now is just put the copper wires in and just solder them to the top, but do not super glue them underneath yet until you've got them all in. And then you can adjust the heights just in case they move. You know what I mean. So that one's ready to go. Right, so now that we've got all our copper wires through the card and sold it to the main rail if you like. Now it's time to check to see if we're looking level across the card. As you can see we're not 100% there yet. So what we'll do is, because all these are all loose, they're not glued, we can do one at a time. Or you can pick out a middle one, get that one spot on. And because it's so flexible um, we can maneuver the rest into place so I'll just put a little bit of super glue on that one give it a chance to go off as you can see this one's up a bit and so is this one so if we super glue that one we can bring that one down with a straight edge and we'll just try and get it level Yeah, it's looking better already. So between there and there, we've got to get that level. So we'll just pick one of the middle ones. And once we're happy, we'll do the rest. Now 
this reel here seems to be a bit high, so we'll push that one down. So what I may do, see, you notice this one's higher than the other two, so what we could probably do is super glue that one, super glue that one, and then push that one down. So it'll act like a cantilever to get it in line, as long as we keep the card straight. Right, so yeah, we can do that. It's looking straight at the minute, so we can do that one. And do that one. And then we'll wait a while, and then we'll push that one down. And hopefully we'll end up with a nice level rail when we're finished. So I'm quite happy with uh, the way that it's turned out. So now I can cut off all of these little extra bits of copper. So, and finally, the last thing to do is to add some triangular brackets, um, which is just one mil card, cut into five mil squares, and then cut across the diagonal to form little triangles. And then you just um, glue them on. I'm super gluing these on, um, just to give it a little bit more strength and make sure they're glued to the back edge and keep them nice and flush with the back edge like so so I have painted the platform and rail um, sat in black so we're waiting for that to dry um, I've also painted the underside of signal box B uh, satin black and I've weathered the top with a brown just giving it a rustic look and uh, here we have the roof for signal box B as you can see I've weathered it down a bit with some black mat and I've um, used some cyan green to finish it off which is uh, interactive paints so that's that done. Um, there's only one thing left to do for these signal boxes now, and that's the um, drain pipes or the down pipes. I'm putting two on each signal box. Um, so that's what I'm going to do next. So, as you can see, I'm c coming really close to finishing these signal boxes off now. Um, I have stuck the um, platform and rails on um, and I've just very slightly weathered them with a little bit of brown in there just to add a bit of dirt on the top and hopefully that finishes that off. If I turn the signal box around a little bit you can see the down pipes which are not quite touching the roof. The reason being is uh, the roof is still loose. I mean, once that's glued down, it is virtually touching. So I just have to be a bit aware when lifting the, the roof um, off, especially for whoever wins the signal box. If you put your thumb close to the back and just gently pull on the cables, and hopefully, then once the cables come through, pull the cables rather than trying to pull the roof. If you pull the roof, the chances are you could um, damage the uh, joints, um, the solder joints on the LED and the um, resistor, even though they are heat shrinked together. So, as you can see, we've done the drain pipes, but I haven't painted them yet. As you can see, you can just see the brass wire around the solder. So I'll paint them, and then we'll um, 
have a look what it looks like on the layout. So here we have a signal box B which has been entered into the competition and it's it is finished to be honest. Um, don't know how much more detail I could add to that. Um, yeah it has a warm glow LED in there and you can see right in there you can see right through there fireplace and the clock um, yeah so that's ready to go on someone's layout and here's what it looks like from the back as you can see you can see the the downpipe on this side and the main support bracket there for the stairs um, I might add a little bit of green to it just in these areas here and here where the water would run off so I might do that and there's the other drain pipe there So good luck to everybody who has entered the competition and we'll have the draw next week. So now that the signal boxes uh, are finished um, I can turn my attention to something I've always wanted to do is to remove the destination signs on these DMUs. Um, it had Hunslow and Oldham. Well, I've um, taken the Oldham out and I've put Sunland in there now. Now then, let's just talk about where I got these destination signs from. Just barely read them. Right, so I got these off of eBay to start with and... Um, the, the guy was quite obliging because I, I told him what I wanted and he said as long as the slot on the front of your DMU is 8 millimeters and over you can get the names of your destinations or whatever you want um, to fit in because I thought well Sunderland and Newcastle are quite long names to fit into a DMU um, destination header if you like but they, they do fit anyway this is who I got them from so if you look them up um, you should be able to get your destination signs and they're quite easy to fit because they're sticky back so basically you cut out what you want with a very sharp blade um, and then they just peel off and then fit in. Now I'll just do this one to show you how easy it is. So basically I'm cutting out um, south shields for this one. You just want to leave a little bit above the lettering just enough thickness for your blade try not to touch any of the lettering at all and hopefully it'll come out quite easy I know the other one did Somehow or another, it just seems to stick to the tip of the blade. It's just a case of popping that in there. As easy as that. And then for the final touch, just use a toothpick to push it in. Uh, 
There you go, it's got its proper name plate in there now. Looks a slightly on the slant, but I can straighten that up, I think. Let's see if I can straighten that up. Yeah, I managed to, managed to take it back out and then straighten it back up. As easy as that, managed to straighten it up. Quite simple, just got to do the EMU now. So that was that was quite easy to do, um, as you as you have seen. So that was from model D graphics at btinternet.com. And uh, yeah, so if you if you want to put your own destination boards in that's the guy to contact model transport graphics so that's one little job done over the past two weeks we have gone from this to this and in the light of that there are still at least three more buildings possibly four that I want to complete for the South Shield station area. So before we go on to that, I'd just like to remind you guys you still have a few more days to put your answers in to win this signal box here. So next week we're going to concentrate on this water tower. Um, it's not the best photograph. Um, I have better photographs. But this photograph shows the little brick hut here which is attached to the side of the um, water tower. So that's one of the bills and I'll be doing that one next week. And in this photograph you can just see the beginning of this little building here. I do have a better photograph of this building. I'm going to turn that into a taxi office. That will probably follow the week after the water tower. And after that uh, cafe com taxi office, this one I'll be very keen to make a start on. This is the Weybridge office. Um, I have two really good photographs of this. This shows you this side of it. And this photograph shows you one end of it. But by looking at it this way, you can see the way bridge this side. So that will be the way out. And this will be the way in from the station. Um, can't really tell what the windows would have looked like. Because in this photograph, they're bricked up. And in the other photograph... They're boarded up with um, some roller shutters, so I haven't got a clue what the windows would have looked like. So I'm going to have to guess on that one. But yeah, that's three of the bills yet to come. And of course, there's still the oval roof. So there's plenty to come from Tony Northeastern. So, I think that's all from me this week. Thanks for watching now. Bye.